going to pass it over to Victoria, but, you know, just want to say and also just give a whole bunch of like appreciation for Victoria because, you know, I'm going to be, yeah, like I said before, we've been doing the, these makeup events for the past year and I honestly didn't start doing my makeup stuff until last month and we hosted a feminizing makeup practice space with like other plume members and uh, you know it was like a cute little intimate social where it was like Victoria and I doing some makeup stuff and yeah it was like the first time I was doing it really in front of other people and it was really vulnerable but I feel like actually because of her I am able to I've been actually able to do being I've been able to do makeup for the past month like almost every other day since then and so like I have so much appreciation for Victoria for helping me along with like my own self-expression journey and I hope that like y'all are able to receive something from her as well so yeah big shout outs lots of love and I'll give it over to you Victoria to start your demonstrations thank you so much Rai that was so sweet so hi everybody Rai gave me a great introduction my name is Victoria Rose I am a woman of transgender experience and I make content for transgender individuals, especially trans femmes on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, you name it. And I really specialize in feminizing content. Most of you maybe, or at least a lot of you were here for Makeup 101. And in Makeup 101, we covered how to contour your face. We covered beard coverage, actually. Let's, <laughs> we started with beard coverage as well as under eye coverage. We talked about how to recede areas that you want to push back with contour as you see this dark space around my forehead, for example. We talked about how to augment certain areas with highlight, as you see right here in this center. So we focused a lot on skeletal changes that happen during facial feminization surgery when the doctors, surgeons, will change a skull from someone that is assigned male at birth to look more like the skull of someone who is assigned female at birth. So today in Makeup 102, we are going to focus on eyes, eyebrows, and lips in that order. So in, okay, starting off with eyes, <laughs> we're actually going to start with all the tools from the top, really. I'm going to send you all of you, Rye is going to send all of you a list of tools, but just to kind of go through everything that we're going to use at the top. For eyes, we're going to use one to two fluffy brushes. These are just blending brushes. You can even use your fingers, really, if you don't have anything else. But you can get these even at like CVS or Walmart. You are going to need a matte eyeshadow color that matches the shade of your highlight. So for me, this color right here is this concealer. So something that is lighter than my skin tone, but it's still kind of close. You can go all the way up to a white color. I really, I'm very fair. So I like to use a white color. It even looks really nice on darker skin tones as well to really bring some light to the eyes. And you're also going to need a matte eyeshadow that matches your contour color. So for me, my contour color is this right here. It's a taupe kind of color. It's not as warm as you're sort of seeing here because I also have bronzer on, but it's sort of a taupe color and that's going to replicate a shadow, a natural shadow. And we want them to be matte because when the light reflects off something that is maybe wet or shimmery or glittery, it's going to accentuate the natural architecture structure of your face. And we're actually trying to kind of go against that a little bit. So for eyebrows, we're keeping it simple and we're sticking with a eyebrow pencil or pen. This is just a little pen that is the same color as my hair. And a eyebrow gel. This is the Jekka Black eyebrow gel. Really love that. And then for, oh, we're also doing a little mascara for the the, the, the eyes. <laughs> and then for the lips, we're sticking with just a lip liner that is a similar tone to your lips. This isn't a perfect match. We want to go the same tone, if not a little bit darker as your lips. So let's jump in. <laughs> 
So with the eyes, we're starting off with an already primed eyelid because we're starting with what we had in Makeup 101, and that includes a little bit of concealer over the lids. Now, when you are doing your eye makeup, your the skin on your eyelids are is very, very thin. So it's going to show through veins and redness and a little bit of purple. And so you really want to try and go in and conceal that in whatever way works for you. So I like to prime the eyelids with either a foundation, a concealer like I used today for, for this look, or an eyelid primer, just something that's going to match your skin tone and will even out any discoloration on your eyelids. But we're starting out with that already done. So we, I always like to work from light to dark and that is especially if we're working with only one brush. If we have one brush, which I spent many, many years with just one crusty eyeshadow brush. <laughs> and I, I always went from light to dark because you can always add more product, but it's kind of hard to take it away. I've oftentimes gone in with a shadow that I thought was going to be a lot less pigmented than it was. And then all of a sudden I'm working with a smoky eye when I was trying to go to work, <laughs> you know, so I like to go from light to dark. So we are going to start with whatever eyeshadow matches your highlight color. And for me, I'm going to use white because I really want to accentuate that color. And I'm so fair <laughs> that it's going to need to, oh, there we go. I'm going in with just a plain matte white color. And we're going to go in on the inner third of the eye. So all of this in here, this socket that you see right there, up to the inner third. I'm going to pack in with that matte white shadow. And as I do that, you're going to see that it not only brings a lot of light and attention to the eye, but what it also does is it fills in that dip that is formed from the brow ridge and potentially a more prominent nose bridge, which personally I have. So you see a pretty intense indent right there. And I can't exactly eliminate my anatomy. So we're working with it. I see someone saying my problem is hooded eyes, which makes it harder. So the techniques that I'm working with today are really designed to be flattering on everybody of, with any eye shape. And we're working on something that is a little more diffused. So even if you have a hooded eyelid, you can still add this light color right into the inner pocket here. And it is still going to give the same effect, whether you have hooded lids, a mono lid, a, a double eyelid, anything that's going on there, it's just going to brighten that up. And it's really going to sort of add volume to this area here on the inner part of the lid. So now that we have that on the inner third, I'm looking through some of the, the chat right now. So as far as laser, everything with my, my personal laser, I know y'all are talking amongst yourselves, but my personal laser is going great. I all know that I love Catch Beauty. And I also, I have had a long-term package with a place called Ideal Image, not sponsored. I just like, I've been getting my face done by them for like, near a decade by now um, and it's going pretty well. So now that we have the lighter part on, so you see how I put that on the inner third of my eyelids. This middle third, I like to call the blending zone. So everything in here, it's already colored with my base skin tone. So it's not going to be our, my, my natural sort of reddish purple lids, which I do, which I have because I have very sunken in eyes. On the outer third, we are going to put a color that matches our contour. So for me, the one that I really found works the best is in the Natasha Denona palette, this taupe right here. It can be anything. It can be, I mean, you can buy these as individuals. You could even use a powder that is meant to be, you know, as a skin tone of a few skin tones lighter and a powder that's meant to be a contour. And you can use those. And honestly, that would probably last longer. So 
as we are going on the outer third, I'm going to take a different brush or you can use the same one, you know, as long as we're working light to dark. And I'm going to tap into that taupe tone. And what I'm, the, the goal of this is to not only lift the eye, but to diminish this brow bone. I have not received SFS, facial feminization surgery yet, <laughs> but you see this ridge right here. The goal is to reduce that and sort of bring it back into the skull. So what I want to do is I want to take my contour and press it in. And if you have hooded eyes, this will work too, because I'm not doing a liner. I'm not doing anything even glittery, anything. I'm just trying to diffuse what already exists. I have worked as a makeup artist for specifically brides for a while on and off. And this has been sort of universally fl flattering. Now this, as I'm tapping it in, you can sort of see what I'm, what I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm both tapping the pigment in to where I want it. So say just because this is makeup one or two, if I want this shape right here to be darker, I'm going to go in with this product and I'm going to tap it where I want it. And then in little swirly motions, I like to blend out. Now, I, if I'm doing a natural tone like this, I will blend all the way up to the eyebrow. And that's because I'm trying to diminish the brow ridge. You know, who says, I've seen so many people, in, myself included, I have added a highlight underneath the brow, but it often ends up looking a little too, you know, sharp and rich. How long does a full routine usually take? I'll answer that as I'm doing this eye. So for me personally, if I'm just doing this, this is a sort of makeup look. If I'm including 101 and 102, um, this would probably take me about 30 minutes, maybe 45 if I really want to like go hard and add lashes or something. And that's if I'm doing all my skin. Personally, in fact, Rye and I were just discussing that I like to go with just my eyebrows and my lashes. Like I just put on mascara and do my eyebrows and I'll show you in just a moment how much of a difference that really makes. So I am really just doing sort of a windshield wiper motion across the outer edge because we want the inner third lighter and the outer third darker. Now that that is blended, I'll even go in with a slightly darker shade just so you can kind of see what I'm doing here. And if I were to show you exactly what I'm doing, I'm going in with both this taupe shade, which matches my contour and this slightly darker shade, just to kind of deepen it. I wouldn't ordinarily do this, but it's just having trouble showing up on camera a little bit. So we're tucking it in right at the base of where your lashes end and going up and around this corner here. Now, something I like to do is I will, instead of getting a separate brush to go under my lids, because girl, who's getting a whole brush set? I say that as I have a whole brush set right here, but <laughs> it's because it was my job. If you want to have a, the equilibrium, you know, we're going to take that same eyeshadow. And with this brush, I just put my nail like this. Do you see like, boop. probably not, <laughs> but I'm folding it so that it sort of makes that shape to go underneath my eyes. And what I love about this is that personally, as I continue to age, I'm currently 26 and I know everyone's, a lot of people are like, you're 26. But I'm just starting to see the the progression of aging. And so for me, I'm trying to diffuse my under eyes. And instead of bringing the concealer all the way up to my lash line, I can diffuse with this. And it no longer is 
destined to look perfect because I've been rubbing it with this taupe eyeshadow. And it just makes my eyes look a little more defined. So, to finish off the eyes, we have one optional step. And that is to curl the lashes. I don't always do this. I did recently start doing it. And I'll tell you why. If you are in a place in your transition or in a place with your skin, you know, I've struggled with acne for many, many years, trust me. But if you're in a place where you're comfortable with wearing less skin makeup to even no skin makeup, I love to focus on my eyes. <laughs> So Randy said I could be her great grandmother. I, I I like to focus on the eyes and the eyebrows and that's really it. And I'll do like a tinted lip balm. So one option for you could be to get your lashes tinted or to do an at-home tint instead of, I see people doing like the, do you see right off the bat, sorry to interrupt myself, <laughs> but you see that eye versus that eye with curling, I have naturally curly hair. And like, this is, I mean, this is kind of heat styled. I have naturally curly hair and my lashes still don't curl like that. So that's why I, I tend to do it. I have tinted lashes as opposed to lash extensions. And the reason why I prefer that is that, yes, eyelash colors are terrifying, but the lash extensions to me can look like you forgot to take off the last part of your makeup almost like especially for in my experience as a trans woman if I'm trying to be like everyday natural whatever I'm not trying to have a full lash on in Walmart at 7 a.m because I stand out differently than other people so that's my personal philosophy as to why I like to have just my natural lashes so now that, that is curled we're just going to do one quick coat. Again, this is a very simple look. I've really done hardly anything. I just slapped a little taupe and a little white on my eye. And I'm just going to throw on some mascara. I see some people saying the, the difference in a previous live stream in Makeup 101. People were asking about the difference between waterproof and not waterproof mascara. This mascara that I'm using right now, which I'll sent to you, Rye will send to you. Thank you, Rye. It's not waterproof. And that's just because I can get super lazy when it comes to taking off my makeup. And waterproof makeup is always much harder to take off. Do I recommend it? Yes. <laughs> if I, like on my wedding day, I was wearing waterproof mascara, but on a day-to-day, -day, I personally don't. And it, it does hold a curl better, but not going to. So I see some people are curling their lashes. Love that. It's really crazy. I don't know why I never curled my lashes. My mom growing up always curled her lashes every single day. And I just never got the point. I was like, I'll just put on fake eyelashes. Who cares? And it was actually this year that I bought my first eyelash curler. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that kind of crazy? I'm 26 and I've transitioned at like 14. This is my first ever eyelash curler that I've owned. Never, never owned one. I just never saw the point in it. And I actually disagree with myself now. Yes, curlers make lashes more visible, makes them pop more. We're also going to apply mascara. You can see this is with and without. We're also going to apply on the lower lash line. To apply mascara, we are going to go to the root of the lash and wiggle your way up. What that does is it coats the bottom of the lash so you have a defined lash line. See that like black line right there versus right there? That's because of the, the, the mascara. Now I also like to blink into it to kind of get it flicked off at the edge. So for the bottom, I do the same thing. I go, I make a crazy base <laughs> and I wiggle at the bottom of my lashes. This also, for people over the age of, mm, I don't know, 16, really helps to disguise any under eye bags. Like it just kind of adds a little bit more of a diffused 
look. So I see someone asking, and I'll, I'll answer this as I'm doing my other eye. I see people asking about what to do if you get mascara on your eye and all of your face as you're applying. That has happened to me so many times. It actually literally happened to me on my wedding day, my worst nightmare. But thankfully, I know what to do. See, we're wiggling here at the root. I know how to fix that. And the main issue that we'll see with people trying to fix that is that they will immediately go in with a tissue or a Q-tip and try to rub it away. And what that's going to do is it's going to rub the wet product into your makeup. If you don't have any skin makeup on and you're doing your eyes first, fine, rub it away. But if you have makeup on, like eyeshadow and stuff, then it's going to be annoying to get off without disrupting your entire makeup. What you have to do is you have to wait. You have to wait until it is fully dry until you wipe it away. So let's say, oops, I got some makeup right there. We're going to wait for that to dry until after I finish my brows and we're going to wipe that away with a Q-tip. If I were to wipe that away now, it would smear and it would make all of that just look gray. I'd have to go back over and cover it up. We might want to go back over and powder, but we're not going to have to cover it back up. What other, there are certain waterproof mascaras that are great at holding a curl as well. Absolutely. I would say most waterproof mascaras will hold a curl better than anything else, but it's just, it can get annoying to take off and I'm losing. And I'm going to try using this dried out. It's not absolutely nothing. Is there a risk of putting on too much mascara? If you're worried about putting on too much, the only concern I would have with that would be applying too much at once, as opposed to doing multiple coats. You can do multiple coats of mascara and it will add length. And, you know, after a certain point, like it'll start to look clumpy, but you can sort of make that decision on your own. On the first coat, if you are opening a brand new tube of mascara, sometimes it's a little bit too wet. And this applies to really everybody, including people that have curly lashes, but it really applies to people that have naturally straight lashes. So a mascara, when you first pull it out of the tube, is going to have a lot of product on it. It's going to be very, very wet. And what does that water in there do? What does the, the weight of the product do? It's going to weigh down your lashes and it's going to diminish the curl. So what you can do if you're worried about it being a little too thick and a little too, you know, wet, girl, you can take the edge of your wand and just put it up against the edge here and wipe some of that off and just keep like rubbing it around to get some of that excess mascara off of the wand. And then you have one that has less product and you can always go back in and add more product, but what you want is something that is a, a nice clean base. I love multiple coats of mascara, but this is just one. This is drugstore mascara. It's nothing special, but just enough to kind of blacken the lashes. Personally, I love liner. I love lashes, but this is makeup one or two. We have all kinds of lessons to go for makeup one or three. If, yeah, so we're going to let this dry as we move on to the eyebrows. This is my personal favorite. So moving on to the brows, we have a diagram. <laughs> so... For me, I naturally have pretty low hanging brows. It runs my family and I've never, again, I haven't had any work done. All the Botox in my forehead is fully gone. It's kind of blurred right now, but trust me, the Botox is fully gone. The brows, you can, I saw someone said, eek, already did my brows. No worries at all, girl. I sometimes I do my brows first, but we're just makeup photo too is eyes, eyebrows, lips. For the eyebrows. I'm not saying you have to tweeze your brows right now. I'm not saying go and grab a little razor or tweezers, but for me, something that changed my life, literally changed my life, is the brows that you see right here. I'm trying to brush them down so you can really get a better idea. I have very thin, thin eyebrows. But that's not because I've plucked the top and the bottom. It is because I have cut my eyebrows in half. So 
part of what they do during facial feminization surgery, should you so choose to go through with this, is they do a brow lift in combination with a brow bone shave. So what we're trying to replicate is, yes, receding this brow bone, which we did with the eyeshadow, and also raising the brow. So say this is your natural brow. This is my incredibly artistic rendition. You see the, the skull, the dip in at the temple. I'm brilliant. So let's say your nose bridge starts there. Right around there. That's very low to where your eyes are supposed to be. That's a little scary, but that's where your eyes are supposed to be. So what I do is I, almost in a diagonal way, is I chopped the brow in half. So I went along here. Hopefully this makes sense. So this way, you see, I, I tweezed off all of the bottom of this brow so that the middle of my natural brow appears to be the bottom of my brows. This makes a little more sense as I continue to go on. But this, I, the, my brows are very thin because I'm going to make them look a little more full in a moment, but that's because I'm trying to make them look higher. So we are going to, now that it is all trimmed and tweezed off, I'm going to go in and draw tiny hairs up as, as tall as I want my brows to be. So let me try and come in close here. I got better camera. Can you guys tell? So I say I want my brows to go that tall. I'm drawing little hairs. That was maybe a little too tall and prominent, but that's okay. You guys got the picture. I want the bottom of my brows to go like that. So I'm just going to draw some more hairs. in that direction. And I don't want to draw too, too many. I just want to draw the suggestion. I know it looks really rough right now. It's very like, like preschool drawing, but trust me, once I do the, the gel, it'll make sense. So again, on this side, we are going to just, I'm outlining the bottom of the brow on the very edge, just to kind of define the tail. And we're going to draw Just a few hairs. And the reason why this is a NYX brow pen, this is a drugstore brand brow pen. I love this because I can get very thin lines like that. So this is, <laughs> this, I, I love brows so much. <laughs> this is the Jekka Black Brow Gel. Love this very much. I've used a lot of them, not sponsored. I just also really love this. Full disclosure, they sent it to me, but I've been using it for so long because it is just the best and I've repurchased. So going on, this is a clear brow gel. Now, say you're a natural blonde and you want to go in and draw brow hairs and you go in with a shade that's maybe a little bit darker than your natural eyebrows because you want more definition, you're going to want to go in with a tinted brow gel. So that's something that has pigment added to it. This right here is clear. This is more of like a, a hair gel almost. So what I do to get them to stand up and make that weird lining make sense is I will brush them first down both of them, I know, it looks insane. And then I'll brush up. And I do both ways just because that really gets both sides of the hair coated. So it gives me an all day lift. And I will brush them all the way up. Now it is sort of a trend to have like the boo, <laughs> like scared brows. That's not really what we're doing here. I am trying to I actually got a little bit of makeup right there. We're going to go in and this is not mascara, so it's easier to wipe away. So you can see already it's disguised the weird draws. So someone said, sorry, I think I missed it. What are you brushing your brows with? 
this is a clear brow gel. This is by Jekka Black, but you can get it really anywhere. You can even use hair gel and an old mascara wand if you want. But this happens to be by Jekka Black. So I am brushing my brows all the way up. And I've let my brows grow out. So again, I th this is the middle of my brow. This bottom here is the middle of my natural brow. But because I've trimmed all that off, it has become the bottom. And so I have, I will go in to where I want my brows to be the tallest. And cut it off there. So I don't really want it to be too, like, afraid. Sorry, I'm trying to, like, really focus as I do this. I still want my brows to look natural, but groomed. Like, I want it to look like I just have all my brow hairs in place. Like, see how that's very, like, brushed up that's also cute and I I like the bushy look but that's not what we're going for I just want my brows to look like they're naturally laid at that part of my head so do we see the difference in the brows okay the brows I'm I'm letting us all have a moment for the brows because that really is like the the game changer for me this is why I will do my mascara and my brows because the the brushing up of the brow do you see how this brow ridge is there my natural brow goes to here this ridge but i brushed it up so it really distracts from that that ridge that dip and it really makes a huge difference i i this is like my signature thing that i suggest to every single girl that i know every every t girl that i know because this is really made a huge difference for me. I'm looking through any thoughts on soap brows versus gel or whatever else. I've seen a lot of, I've never personally done soap brows. I've seen people use like bar soap and Castile soap to get their brows to stick up. Whatever works to get them to stay up for you, go right ahead. I personally haven't done soap, but I've heard great things. So if that works for you, by all means. Just something that will keep them stood up. I'm about to go get tweezers so I can do them tonight. Yeah. Did you go somewhere to have it done or literally trimmed it yourself? Not sure I trust myself. So I actually, because I wear makeup, I don't really trust other people to do my brows. Like, because I feel like they would be like, that's too thin, you know? Because like they're, they're pretty thin. I want to be able to go in and control it myself. So I've only ever done it with tweezers. Because the beauty is if you trim them too small, you can just draw them back on like just draw them back on you know what I mean now for this also I apologize if you can hear my cats meowing I'm closed off in my office right now we're circling back to the mascara that was on my face this has had time to fully dry so I am taking a q-tip a dry q-tip and I'm just gonna like swirl it in my hands on that area and because it's dry this should help to buff it right off. Do you see that? I mean, if if I were to be really like on top of it, I'd probably add a little bit of powder right there just to kind of like whatever, but it's not fading into gray. It's not mixing into my makeup because I let it dry. Now, I know we're running out of time, but luckily this last part is actually super, super fast. So for your lips, during facial feminization surgery, one of the procedures that you can elect to have done is a lip lift. And that is when they shorten the philtrum. The philtrum is the gap between your cupid's bow right here and the base of your nose. They lift that to create a more classically feminine, youthful appearance. But we're going to replicate it with makeup. So I'm going in with just a lip liner that is a similar shade to my lips. This isn't perfect. I would go the same shade, if not a tiny bit darker, because we want to add a little bit of a shadow of like the edge of the lip. When you are aligning your lips, we're going to wipe off any products that might be on the lips. So if you have any lip balm, any foundation, powder, anything on your lips, just wipe it away so you don't want it to just wipe off immediately. Like I, I'm a big Aquaphor person and I'll have Aquaphor all over my lips. So 
when you overline, we're going to go on our, our bare lips. And if you are ever overlining, you want to remember two things. One, we, oh, do y'all see that? Do y'all see those balloons too? Or is that just me? We're going to, we're going to overline only to that white line. I've never had any filler in my lips. This is most people naturally have a sort of lighter line over their lips and we never want to go above that light line we want to keep that like the absolute max you ever bring it up because otherwise it will look overdrawn and second we want to never extend past the corner of the mouth the corner is where we meet our natural lip so if we're going to shorten this we are going to, over this white line, just draw the same the same shape that you have on your lips. Or if you want to change it, change it. But I'm just replicating the, my natural shape because I think that's what suits me best. And I want to balance it out by just adding a tiny bit to the very, very bottom, because when the top lip is larger than the bottom, it can start to look a little duck-like, and that's when you get the overfilled look. And we don't want to look like we have a lot of filler. We want to look like we have feminine lips. So just underneath, to make it look more balanced. And again, the natural corners so now that, that is lined you can either you have two options one would be to go in and just dab it with your finger and it starts to just give you a really pretty natural look or if you like, you can go in with a lip balm, a lip gloss, a lip oil, and it'll lift. Sorry, I'm reading the, the comments at the same time. You can go in with a lip balm, a lip oil, a lipstick, whatever it is, and put it on top. Now, the only caution I have for that is that we've been working with matte shades so far to keep the light from revealing our teeth. You know what I mean? We don't want to, if you're overlaying too much and you put a gloss on, you're going to see your natural lips and then the line on top. And that's not going to be that cute. So if you're worried about that, keep it matte. Otherwise, this is just a, this is by Clinique, but this is just a tinted lip balm basically. And if you're actually, if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, this is what they used on Arwen. And I just, this is basically a tinted lip balm. It's hardly pigmented at all. And that's it. You can even just go in with a non-tinted lip balm and just put it right on top. And it just gives that like natural look. So do you see with these tips how much, yes, black honey, Clinique black honey, honey. You see how much you can feminize your face with just a few products here. I see someone saying, I've had bad luck overlining my top lip. If I go more than like a millimeter at most, I end up looking full clown. Totally understand. I think if you're to troubleshoot that, maybe focus on only ever overdrawing the very center, like third of your lips and keep everything else flush to the natural side because you can start to look a little too like big, like wide. Something I see a lot, and this is no shade because I want FFS too, girl, but something I see a lot in girls with FFS, they get their face kind of pulled back and that can result in a little bit of like a, like goblin mouth. Do you know what I'm talking about? That's no shade, like literally. But that's something that, that I do tend to avoid when I draw my lips because I've noticed that quite a bit. During the practice webinar, is it possible to only have my screen visible to you versus everyone? That's, I'll direct that to Rye after. I'll let you answer that, Rye. I see someone saying, I have very thin lips. I really need to learn how to do this without looking like a clownfish. That's the same exact uh, advice that I would give to Kat Bella here with just focusing on the center third of the lips and adding that height there, but nowhere else. Because the only goal is to shorten this, the distance of your filtrum right here. Now, people can do that with 
you know, a lip lift or pulled back a majestic look. That is actually super, super accurate. <laughs> Cameron Diaz, never really thought about that. That absolutely is it. And guess what? Cameron Diaz is gorgeous and beautiful and glamorous. So yes, the Cameron Diaz look. I have a habit of overdrawing my lips too much. I went through a phase in high school. It was around the King Kylie era when Kylie Jenner was first getting her lips done and stuff. I was like, I think 16 and she started getting her lips filled. And so I got the Mac Sore lip liner. <laughs> would do the intense like purple, like plum lip all day, every day for no reason in high school. But you know what? It's fun. It's fun. If you want to do something fun like that, do it. If you want to do something more extravagant, do it. Like th that's the beauty of makeup. But this is more so just sort of if you're trying to just learn the basics and you're trying to learn makeup, especially for safety or your own comfort in the workplace or just walking down the street, I'm your girl. You know, I, I can do some fun makeup things here and there, but I also could turn a cis boy into a possible woman. So you mentioned using color of your hair with some makeup. What if your hair is turned gray? Use your old original color. So if your hair is turned gray, that's a great question. As far as I, th I think we're talking about with your natural, oops, with your natural color would be the brows. I would go for a darker gray. If your hair is already gray, um, I'm assuming it's sort of maybe a mixture of like gray and like a little bit of salt and pepper. Go for the pepper. Aim for that. Or focus on the salt in the front and the pepper in the back. <laughs> party in the front. Oh, this is the front party in the back. You, you want the edges of your brows to be darker than the center, but still go with your, your hair color. Because say you're a natural redhead and you're gray, I wouldn't have you draw your red hairs in on your brows, you know? So go with whatever your hair color is at right now. If you're a natural brunette and you have blonde hair, you want to go with a blonde brow. I was blonde for a while. I think a lot of trans, I think a lot of trans girls have a little bit of a blonde face. I did. And it really ruined my hair. Gone silver and gray, maybe a touch of light blonde. Original was brown. Yeah. Yeah. You can go with, if it's a light brown, a light blonde, maybe like a little brown, you can go for a taupe. I would say that a taupe, the same kind of color uh, you see here, darker than that. Of course, you can actually see it on your face, but a taupe, something that's like a, a cool toned brown would also work well. So yeah, that's, that's the finished look really is the, the brows, the mascara, the shadow and the lips. Oh my God. Right. Uh, I see that. <laughs> Don't think you fooled me putting the, the liner what? on. That's gorgeous. <laughs> I mean, you were going with like the, you know, you're going with like the everyday look and was like, all right, we have to, we have to have the contrast, right? Because I'm like, I love having more of like the bold, because you're talking about just doing like the brows and the mascara. I love doing personally love to do like a bold eye and that's kind of mostly it. But I was actually just following along with your eyeshadow technique of like the light and the blending and then kind of on the dark. So yeah, but you know, I love, I love how you added the dark sort of inside of the graphic liner. That's super cute. It almost like makes your eye look like a, a different shit. I love like adding contours to a graphic liner. So it really emphasizes mm -hmm. it. That's, that looks am amazing. Thank you. So and you know what, to, to also to everybody watching, like whether you want to do something natural or something extravagant, it is so fun to experiment with makeup. And I think it can be such an affirming experience, whether it's an artistically affirming experience or a gender affirming experience or all of the above. You mm -hmm. know, I, I've i gone through phases where I felt like I could only wear this kind of makeup and I felt like I could only like pass or feel good about myself if I was wearing basic like everyday makeup. And I'm at a point now where while I enjoy this kind of makeup, I also enjoy wearing blue eyeshadow sometimes. And I like wearing glitter. And guess what? First of all, no one really notices the difference. But even if they did, who cares? You know, right. so I, I think that is something to remember that as long as obviously you're safe in, in today's society, but like, who cares? If someone looks for a little longer, that just means that they're looking at how cool your makeup is, you know? So, Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And just like echoing what Julie also said in the chat too, just saying that like makeup is fun and so helpful, like really 
both at the same time like there's some like makeup is really what you make of it it is something that can help you with your gender euphoria it's something that can help you with your gender expression it's something that can you know if you're looking for just like help you have a sense of safety as well it's really anything that you make of it and so I highly recommend everybody just like experiment play with it find what works for you maybe it's like the brows and the mascara is all that you need maybe you want to go with like the big graphic eyeliner maybe you want like the full face of like foundation and everything and that's what like feels good to you but it's like it's about like finding your own personal relationship to it Absolutely. It's a journey. And it's, it's also a skill like everything else that it's going to take practice and it takes your own passion in it to actually develop that skill. And something Mm -hmm. just to kind of put a cap on this, I have always loved makeup because even when I began my transition and I felt so frustrated because nothing was changing in my face or my body or anything else. And I was like, so impatient and just wanted to look like a woman overnight. The one thing I could control was my makeup. And that's Mm -hmm. why I practiced so hard. And that's why I am at where I am today, because I, that's the one thing I could control. And so that's why I'm very passionate about teaching this to other people that no matter where you're at, no matter anything you can practice this skill and you can get better at it no matter your starting point Mm -hmm. absolutely quick question did we get to go through the questions in the q a i think you're getting the questions in the chat but did you we get to go through the q a just no i did not even see the q a oh my god all right well let's go ahead and tackle those and then we can call it a night how's that for you yeah let me start from the earliest okay so how to properly apply gradient eyeshadow if you're looking to apply a gradient we want to start we're still working from lightest to dark any kind of shimmer we want to save maybe for the end so we don't extend that everywhere but we're talking about just mattes for now. You want to work from light to dark. When we're working on the darks, say I wanted to go for a really dark brown on the inner part here and diffuse it out. I would start with this taupe that I already have and I would slowly add the darker shades as I go with like maybe one shade darker and then one shade darker in a smaller area and one shade darker in a smaller area. And when you think you're done blending, blend some more. Take your time, use multiple brushes if you have to, and go in and really make sure it's fully blended. Take your time, but it, it work from light to dark. I have extremely hooded eyes, so much that the hood doubles over into my eyelashes. Do you have any advice on how to help do my eyes? So, A, using matte eyeshadow. There are all kinds of different ways that you can sort of play with your eye shape with lashes for example or I and I were just talking about like eyelid tape or there's all kinds of different methods that you can do to sort of alter the way that your eye is but your your hooded eye isn't necessarily masculine or feminine that's just a a lot of people of all gender expressions have hooded eyes so try not to worry so much on the gender aspect but if you're worried about sort of looking maybe tired or anything else that is stereotypically associated with that this sort of look will help to diffuse and lift and brighten your eyes. I have deep set brown eyes with ever present dark circles from years of poor work-life balance. I hear you there. I've mastered the natural look with lighter tones thanks to your tutorials, but would you suggest if I wanted to try something more dramatic for evening while avoiding the raccoon effect I'm prone to? Thank you. I would recommend going with, we talked in the, the in the top of the Q&As, we talked about a diffused, blended, smoky eye look, I would go for that. So if we're starting out with already these light colors, you already have a base for going a little bit darker. So if I were to go into, for example, this Natasha Denona palette, this is what I used in my crease here. I could then touch into this tone. I could then touch into this tone if I felt like going just a little bit deeper if I wanted to really avoid the dark tones, because you're if you're maybe afraid of the quote unquote raccoon look, which I understand, you can always on the lighter parts add some shimmer. You know, you can always go in, say this tone right here looks maybe a little bit darker, but on the skin, it has that shimmer. So if you're looking to jazz it up for the nighttime you can always add a little bit of sparkle instead of adding the the darkness 
to your eyes. I can't tell, but do you have hooded eyes or can you buy a device? So we talked about the hooded eyes. I do have, I like very slightly hooded. You kind of can't tell with makeup on, but you can see I have a little bit of like a double creasing here. I'm sure that will continue as I continue to age, but that's something that I, I like to blend out with the taupe shadow to really help diffuse and maybe draw attention away from. Uh, how can I save money trying makeup? Any places that are cheap? How can I make my skin tone with makeup? And is there anything, oh, there we go. Is, and is there anything to match with like a bright lipstick? So saving money and matching your skin tone. I always recommend going to something like a Sephora or uh, an Ulta where you don't even have to buy anything, but they can just match your skin tone to be like, okay, if I am this shade in Mac, what shade would I be in Elf? You know, I can Google what shade would NC30 be in Elf? And they'll have an answer somewhere on, on Google for you. And if you're at Ulta, the beauty of that is they have Elf in the store. They have somewhere like Ulta has both high end and low end makeup. So if you're trying to save money, going somewhere like that, they can direct you to the drugstore $8 foundation that's going to look amazing. And, and trust me, there are some really incredible drugstore products, especially as of about 2015. Drugstore makeup is actually really good. So highly, highly recommend that. So go for drugstore, go for any sales that you can get. And uh, matching, like I said, go for, go to talk to someone that works there and that's their job. They're trained to find something that will match you. And for matching a bright lipstick, that's also something I would ask for them because it will depend on your skin tone. But for lips, I like to make, as far as pa like passing, I do a one or the other rule. So I'll go either like a really intense lip and like a more neutral eye, or I'll do something really cool. Like I'm a fairy today on the eyes, and then I'll do like a more neutral, natural lip. And it helps to keep me from looking a little too, as other people have in this have said, like clownish without looking like I have too much makeup on. Is there a full routine on a daily basis for all outings? Seems like it would take a lot of time for application removal just for simple outings. So this will all depend on where you're at in your transition. Personally, for most of the outings that I do now, like if I'm out with my family, which is really all that I ever do now, I will just do my mascara and my brows. And if I have like a, a zit or something, I'll cover it up, but I'll stick with just that. Otherwise, this is like, if I'm going on a date, you know, with my husband and I want to look cute, but not too much, this is what I'll do. And the more you do it, as I said, it's a skill and it's something that you'll get a lot faster at. This, I could do this probably in like, 15, 20 minutes if I was rushing, but I enjoy taking my time because it's fun. You know, if, if I'm going out to dinner, I'll have a little glass of wine and I'll do my makeup. And that's, it, that brings me gender euphoria because I just, I think of my mom getting ready and it just makes me feel nice. How to stop eyebrow gel from forming white crust? Great question. That will depend on the brow gel you're using and also the amount of gel you're using. So I have experienced that a lot because I only like a year ago started using brow gel. And I will, when you're taking, just like the mascara, if you're taking this out and there's a lot of gel product on it, really hard to see on this, <laughs> but you can go right in and just wipe it off. So you want to wipe off any excess product because again, you can add more if you want to add more product, you can go ahead and add more. But if there's too much, it's going to clump up and that's what's going to form the white powder, a white crust, which is also mostly from the powder on your face. Is eyeliner going to be covered or on episode two? If we have another one coming, then absolutely. That would be coming up next because this is sans liner or lashes. But trust me, I got, actually, I made my closest friend, my ring bearer, by teaching her how, her how to do her lashes at prom. So... <laughs> I mean, Any we advice? can get the, we can get the episode three. <laughs> we can talk hey, about it, Victoria. Yeah. So. Let us know. Any advice on the eyebrows with ethnic downswept hair pattern for the outer two thirds of grown downwards. So actually in this diagram, it's kind of hard to see, but I do show this part being drawn downwards. My brows personally, of course I'm white, but like my eyebrows do on the outside grow down and I still will brush them upwards. If you don't want to, absolutely don't do that. You can brush them just around or down. And I would say draw in the same direction as you want your brows. I want my brows to be pushed more this way, like out and around. But if you want to work with your natural brow shape and like down, absolutely go right in and just draw little brow hairs in that same direction to get the same shape. 
just a general question. Makeup makes my skin feel stiff and dry at times. Like I'm wearing a mud mask. I totally, I've been there. Is this from cheap makeup, bad skin that doesn't like makeup? Or is there something I'm doing wrong? There is maybe a few things that could be the culprit in this situation. One might be too much makeup. That's something that I've definitely experienced quite a bit is wearing too much and feeling like, like I had to cover every inch of my skin in like a mask almost. And that can be a little tough. Maybe the prep could be causing you some issues. Maybe if you have too much moisturizer or primer on at the base or none at all. Maybe if you are someone with drier skin and you're putting your foundation on dry skin without any prep, that might be absorbing into your skin, which is causing you to apply more. That's another option that might be making you feel like you have a lot on. And then the third, I would say, is maybe powder. You might be overpowdering your face and you might want to consider switching to a setting spray, something that can keep it in one place and then only powdering certain areas. For me, I only really powder under my eyes, which you can still see I have such intense lines here. I powder under my eyes, my chin, and my forehead because I'm changing the shape of that. And lastly, we have, is there a way to put on fake lashes if you have little to no eyelashes so I can have some? So absolutely there is. The four, I'm just assuming you have almost no lashes. I would highly suggest looking into Glamnetic, not sponsored at all, but Glamnetic is a brand where you draw on the eyeliner with a magnetic like formula somehow. And you stick the lashes to that eyeliner and it stays on because it's magnetic. I don't really know how that works, but I've heard a million people say it's really good. It's been around since 2015 and it's doing really well. So that is something I'll send that to Rye as well. That that's another thing that you could definitely use is Glamnetics. Otherwise, you can use normal lashes, but I would say it would take some tr some trial and error to try and make sure that it's on your skin properly and secured. But Glamnetics, actually, you're a perfect candidate for Glamnetics. So go for that. <laughs> so thank you so much, Victoria, for everything. So, so happy that you're just like, yeah, your makeup, your passion, just like the resources, all of like the education, you know, it's so beautiful.